Welcome to VWG. I have Canadian futurist and science fiction author from Winnipeg, Manitoba, or Brandon, Manitoba, Carl Schroeder. Sorry, I miss. <laughs> Schroeder, Schroeder. It's it's all it's all good. Okay, so nice to see you. Yes, it's great to meet you. Okay, so you're a futurist. I'm assuming that means like you predict things. Uh, absolutely not. No. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and that again is uh, you know, uh, as earlier before we uh, started recording. Uh, that is also an excellent question. Um, uh, a f a prophet is someone who predicts. A futurist is someone who studies the future, um, and they may make predictions along the way. Um, however, uh, um, we're really not in the business of making uh, predictions as such. Um, foresight is what we prefer to call it, strategic foresight, um, and it is basically the science of surprise. Um, why do people, organizations, uh, countries get surprised? Um, how are they surprised? Um, how can they prevent themselves from being surprised, cope with surprise, and potentially inflict surprise on others? Um, I tend to think of the future as the dimension of surprise. And uh, uh, that is the the space that I explore in. And um, uh, uh, try and, and, and consult in as well. And the reason um, that uh, I, I have such a strong reaction to uh, uh, prediction is that um, uh, there's several different kinds of future. There's there's the physics future where we know exactly how fast the Earth is going around the sun and exactly how fast it turns so that I can predict for you exactly when the sun will rise on June the 1st, 2,504, let's say, right? Um, uh, and then we have statistical uh, methods that we use to predict other things. Um, like the weather. Uh, but what uh, futurists, as you did the air quotes, uh, and people in foresight um, are most concerned about is uh, uh, singular events that uh, can't actually be predicted, that might be anticipated, like let's say COVID-19. Uh, we had all kinds of... Um, scenarios about uh, what could happen uh, with a new pandemic and so on, but no one could predict when that was going to occur or even if it was going to occur. And that's the kind of future people are most interested in. Um, and that's the space that, that we work in. Oh, wow, nice. You're a sci-fi author. What got you into sci-fi? Um, uh, well, a couple of things. Um, uh, I grew up in a family where most of us read, um, but as well, my mother, um, Anna Schrader, had published two uh, uh, romance novels uh, before I was born. So growing up, I saw these books in the bookshelf and thought, well, naturally, everybody writes, so uh, I can do it too. Um, I didn't realize how exceptional uh, that was. But um, uh, the science fiction part comes because um, when I was very young, uh, mother had um, a set of bookshelves in our family room, and uh, uh, they had the top shelf, Agatha Christie, the middle shelf, Georgette Hare, and the lower shelf, Andre Norton. These were all three very prolific authors uh, at the time. And it was the lower shelf that I re reached first. Um, so uh, <laughs> I began reading the Andre Norton and was was hooked, basically. Um, uh, so when I started writing myself, that was the kind of thing I wrote. Oh, yeah, nice. Are you working on any new books as of now? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I uh, just finished a major project. Um, I have a couple of uh, short stories 
in the pipeline for different um, uh, publishers. And uh, I am working on uh, a fun but but tragic a sort of global warming um, uh, Arctic airship novel. Um, <laughs> It's uh, it's all about a fellow named uh, Frank Tanniger, who's uh, a rigger on a uh, near future solar powered freight airship in the, the far north, um, and uh, he's just basically trying to keep the company afloat while uh, the world comes unhinged around him. Um, I'm having a, a, a pretty good time writing this one. Oh, it sounds like an amazing story. And finally, for our regular question, we'll, we'll get back to that in a little bit. Who's this character, Gennady Malinov? And can we see him in live action animation in the future? <laughs> I would certainly uh, enjoy that. Um, where did you hear ab about Gennady? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. I look, I looked you up on the internet. <laughs> I see. Um, well, Gennady is just one of the many characters I've written about over the years, but um, uh, he ended up being the um, uh, the subject of a series that uh, I wrote, not really realizing I was stumbling into a series. It was just. Um, I wrote a story with this uh, pathologically shy Ukrainian arms inspector as the central um, character, uh, a kind of anti-James Bond who uh, is never happier than when he's in an isolated, dangerous, radioactive uh, wasteland, because at least there he knows he doesn't have to talk to anyone. Um, and uh, uh, that first story was successful and I had fun with it. And I just kept coming up with more ideas for terrible situations to get Gennady into and uh, ended up with uh, about a book's worth of uh, uh, stories that I uh, really need to collect into a, a collection and uh, uh, sell because maybe then you're right it'll become a nice uh, uh, series. For sure. Now normally I would end the interview now but since he's a futurist I sent him quick fire questions for him to answer to predict for fun to see if they could actually happen. Do you remember what I sent you? Uh, I can pull it up, but it's probably best if you uh, read them out for for our audience. Why, yes, of course. <laughs> Start off, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Um. Well, I'd like to see myself on a yacht in the in the Mediterranean, um, uh, but uh, I, I suspect that I'll still be in Toronto and uh, still be um, writing, but uh, on a more full time basis than I am right now. I've recently started a uh, a Substack newsletter called Unapocalyptic, um, and uh, I'm doing weekly updates on that, and hope to. Um, uh expand my online writing um uh to match up with the uh more traditional uh book and magazine writing that i've done in the past uh, so that's my project over the next few years i also have a couple of um uh more adventurous things that i'm planning um uh there are some ideas that came out of the writing of my last book stealing worlds that um, might actually be doable in the real world. And I've been working with some uh, technologists and entrepreneurs and legal experts and, and so on um, to uh, try and make one of these a reality. So we'll see if that happens. Oh, yes, we will. Okay, next quick quiet question. When could we see another Canadian sports team winning a major trophy? <laughs> um, didn't uh, um, uh, Toronto just win um, an international um, uh, one? Uh, I seem to remember. The um, Raptors in 2019, if that's who you're referring to. No, it was the Maple Leafs. They were playing uh, overseas. But then I don't follow the Maple Leafs. Um, I, um, I, I would typically be following uh, Winnipeg if I was uh, uh, oh, yeah. still <laughs> interested in sports. Um, but um, uh, uh, I cannot predict that, but I am going to say next year. How's that? 
Ooh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Two more and then I'll end. Sure. Which big names of celebrity do you think I'll interview first? Hmm. Um, well, I think you'd be pretty far away from Sam Altman right now because he's the uh, the the open AI chat GPT guy that everybody is um, uh, trying to uh, talk to at the moment. Um, the uh, my guess would be um, uh, how about Titania Maslany because she's a, a a rising Canadian film star. Um, from uh, uh, Saskatchewan, um, who uh, um, had the successful TV series Orphan Black, uh, which was shot in Toronto. So um, uh, hopefully soon she can be back here and uh, you can uh, interview her, her. Oh, yeah, for sure. And finally, we all know the Simpsons predict the future, like they predicted the Apple Watch. When... Could you possibly be on The Simpsons? <laughs> hmm. Um, it's been going a very long time, hasn't it? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, possibly at any time, um, because my quotes are sort of popping up randomly lately. I, uh, I, I was quoted in Scientific American back in the spring, which uh, kind of flabbergasted me. So uh, uh, when I th throw off, you know, um helpful uh, uh life advice such as um uh things are never so bad that they can't get worse or um uh there are a few problems in life that you, you can't solve by lowering your standards um uh, phrases like that you know have a tendency to work their way around and and and, and pop up um on odd occasions so um could happen anytime Oh, interesting. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me, Carl. Uh, thank you so much, Graham. No problem.